All right, so here we have Blue Green Crush of Tentacles. Um, this is a pretty special deck. It's an unusual strategy, and it's not a deck you will see at most standard tournaments. Not a deck I've have even played against on Magic Online, but it is a very powerful deck. Here I'll be playing with it. It's a deck that has been recommended to me by a local Maryland player, Alan Sun, who has put up a string of results at Grand Prix recently. And the deck is just super powerful. It's fun to play with. Um, it's basically a, a breath of fresh air right now in this current standard format. And to top that off, it's good against a lot of the top decks in the format. So let's go ahead and go over what this deck is actually doing. Um, the mana base, we've got a bunch of basic lands here because we've got various ways of searching out lands from our deck. So we want to have constantly lands we can search for so that we get can get to 15 lands or more over the course of the game um, because we want to end the game with a ton of lands in play or else our opponent's going to be able to do us in, essentially. Um, so we got a ton of basics here. We've got four Lumbering Falls, uh, which should be pretty straightforward. Taps for blue and green. It can also be a win condition. Um, we've got Blighted Woodland and Rogue's Passage, a couple of sweet one-ofs. Rogue's Passage helps us get in the last few points of damage. Blighted Woodland is basically another ramp card for us. Two copies of Skyline Cascade help lock our opponent's creatures down. We play it, stops um, one of our opponent's creatures from attacking, and it just helps us prolong the game, which is what we're trying to do. Send to Sleep, similar to Skyline Cascade, except it actually taps the creature, and it can tap two creatures. Um, once we have Spell Mastery, we really want to be casting Send to Sleep with Spell Mastery so that those creatures won't be untapping during the next untap step. And this is one of those cards that's just going to help us get to our late game. And it's basically a necessary evil. We've got four Anticipates to try to find our combo pieces. Sometimes they can be used to find us lands. And are just a nice two mana spell. Um, nothing flashy, but this is one of the best forms of card draw that we have access to. Um, we've got four copies of Elvish Visionary. Elvish Visionary, it can trips, and it's a one one creature, but it's great when we can just return it to our hand and then replay it and replay it so it may not seem like anything special as a two mana one one creature that draws a card but it's good early and it's good late so at that point it just makes sense to play the full four copies and then we move on to our den protectors den protector is basically the signature creature of the deck. It does everything. Um, most notably, we can get back Crush of Tentacles later in the game, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but we're able to loop whatever we want to, basically, with this card. We can go Den Protector, get back another Den Protector. They can become win conditions, and the card just gets um, you out of a lot of tight spots. You always want to have one. Um, so can't say enough about how powerful this card is, and it's the best I have seen Den Protector be in any deck in Standard, uh, since the card has been printed. I will say that. Um, so let's go to three mana. We've got Nissa's Pilgrimage, a standard ramp spell. Three copies make sense here. Um, we've got enough forest so that... We should be able to cast it even with Spell Mastery and find two additional Spell uh, Forests plus the one we're going to put into play. Similar to Nissa's Pilgrimage, Nissa's Vastwood Seer also finds a forest, um, but it can be used in a variety of ways. 
we're gonna get to seven mana a lot of games especially games we want to win we're gonna need to get to seven mana so um nissa is gonna be able to flip uh, most of the time you're actually just gonna want to tick it up and it can become a way to ramp out lands um draw cards we all know how powerful nissa vast would see her is and it has a nice home here now there is one counter spell in the deck and that's void shatter and it's been pretty pretty good um being able to return it with den protector is nice and just having a one of counter spell your opponent isn't going to see coming the surprise value definitely adds something to the card so we've got three copies of explosive vegetation here as some more ramp a single whirler rogue which is another creature we don't mind returning to our hand at all um it also provides us some flying so if our opponent's got something like an avacyn or another flying threat we can play whirler rogue and it can help us buy us some additional time now personally my favorite card in the deck is sight beyond sight I have not seen Sight Beyond Sight be played in any other standard deck, but here it's actually very good. Um, it's similar to Anticipate. It's kind of like a double Anticipate for double the mana and at sorcery speed. Um, but we're going to play it on turn 4. And then on turn 5, we can surge out a Crush of Tentacles because we can rebound our Sight Beyond Sight and have already cast a spell for the turn. So let's take a look at Crush of Tentacles here. Basically the signature card of the deck. So Crush of Tentacles, we are very rarely hard casting it. it it's almost always going to there's always there's almost always going to be a way to surge it out for 5 mana and that's basically going to return everything to their owner's hands all non-land permanents that means if we have a land in play with counters it's gonna stay in play same on our opponent's side um, but all of our creatures are meant to come back to our hand we we want them all back because we're gonna get additional triggers cards like elvish visionary and den protector we just want to be returning them get getting more value out of them there's also just a lot of token strategies in the format which are going to completely fold um, to a card like Crush of Tentacles and just on being able to cheaply make an 8-8 blue octopus. The octopus is not a small creature. It's a legitimate threat. It can win the game completely by itself but the real combination here and the reason why Crush of Tentacles is so good is is so good is that if we have a den protector and a crush of tentacles basically all we need to do is get to 10 mana then we can play den protector unmorph it get back crush of tentacles and just do that every single turn so we can cat replay crush every single turn and if our opponent doesn't have any instants or flash threats they're basically completely helpless for instance, if we get to 10 mana against White Weenie with Crush of Tentacles plus Den Protector, they basically can't win. There's nothing they can do um, in order to stop that combination. So it's just a matter of getting to that point in the game. And the same is with a lot of decks. It's not as simple. Um, sometimes your opponent does have ways to interact with the combo, but... Once reaching the critical amount of lands, it's pretty easy to find a way to win, even against the most controlling decks in the format. Um, and we've got some other big spells here besides Crush of Tentacles. Three copies of Part the Water Veil. Um, we've seen this card before as, in this type of deck, and it's just really nice. It's one of the win conditions in the deck. 
it's also a way to just transition nicely between between having six lands and ha having seven or eight. And it helps you turn the corner very quickly. As soon as this card gets cast, the game can end within a turn or two. So, the last of the big spells is Nissa's Renewal. It's the only life gain in the deck. It's also a ramp spell. And it's really fun to just replay Nissa's Renewal two or three times during the course of the game. Um... It makes your opponents feel pretty silly. And getting three lands is a lot of lands. It basically is one card and it transitions you to having access to the combo on the very next turn of Den Protector plus Crush. So pretty much any time I find myself being able to cast Nissa's Renewal and not die, I like to do it. The card is that good. Um, so this is the main deck. It may seem pretty weird considering how are we going to win the game, but a lot of the times it is just making a land into a 6-6 six, six or making, it, making an 8-8 eight, eight octopus, and that's um, going to be good enough. The sideboard may seem even weirder than the main deck. Depends how you look at it. Um, there's some cards that are pretty straightforward. We want Sylvan Advocates and Den Protectors against aggressive decks or creature decks we want to fight with on the ground. Clip Wings is a way to deal with Flyers. We don't have a lot of flying. Um, and Archangel Avacyn in particular is kind of annoying. So having Clip Wings to answer Avacyn if we want it is nice. Uh, Displacement Wave and Hydra Lash are cards we have against White Weenie. That is the, the deck's worst matchup, so we have to go um, ahead and play some cards we might nor not normally have in our sideboard to be able to make the White Weenie matchup winnable after sideboarding. <clears throat> There's also some counter spells here. We've got three negates, um, pretty typical, and then... One Invasive Surgery, um, this is nice against any of the controlling decks. The control decks are already good matchups anyway, and the counter spells just make the matchups even better. We also want to board in the gates against decks like Reed White Tokens. Most of the time, your opponents are going to be boarding, boarding in counter spells of their own, and so sometimes you just want to be able to have a card like Negate, to be able to force through your Crush of Tentacles because without Crush, the deck doesn't function the way you really want it to. The last card on the sideboard is Ulamog. Um, it's another big threat that is capable of winning the game. It's not in the main deck because you don't need it in the main deck, but um, we've seen Ulamog and how powerful the card is, and so there is one copy in the sideboard. So this is the blue-green Crush of Tentacles deck, and I'm pretty excited to showcase it in some matches on Magic Online.